another a allegation i know this is technically an appeal for e Jean carroll but i mean how, how many times is, are we going to see this where you know president donald trump's going to continue to be attacked with with these tied up legal allegations for court case to court case to court case to court case to court case all the way up to the election i mean do we see a pattern here let's listen to see what the latest is right now uh, on this e Jean carroll's case this is the uh, trump's lawyer right here talking about these uh, false accusations, things that they, they just got done with the appeal and the things that they were brought on the other side of, of E. Jean Carroll's case about what was allegedly done. Um, it's a lot, we, always, we already know that some of these stories are already fabricated, but let's just hear what the, the lawyers uh, for Trump have to say about all this. Said She said story. There is no corroboration for anything she has ever claimed about President Trump. There are no corroborating witnesses, as President Trump alluded to. There is not confirmatory DNA. No police report was filed at the time of this alleged incident. She was unable to identify when this incident occurred until quite recently. No surveillance evidence or witnesses have ever uh, been found or come forward confirming any aspect of E. Jean Carroll's story. In and so... I'm gonna let this keep going. Just give me a minute, but it's so there's there's no evidence. There's 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 no evidence at all. You know, there's there's no videotape. It's just he said, she said, like he said at the beginning to this case, and the the court admitted this this whole appeal for what reason? Just think about this. Let's just say you were in a different type of trial or, or jury system. If you don't have any evidence, you don't have any security footage, you don't have anything. How can any of this even go past a legit judge to get to get prosecuted? to get even a, a, a hearing done, it would just be thrown out of the case. But for whatever reason, they let this thing slide. In light of that, in light of the utter implausibility of the story that E. Jean Carroll was attempting to sell to the jury in this case, her attorneys introduced evidence that should have never seen the inside of a courtroom. Utterly uh, in, insane uh, efforts to introduce propensity witnesses, Jessica Leeds and Natasha Stoinoff, uh, most notably, in an unfair and improper effort to buttress E. Jean Carroll's failed attempt uh, to assault President Trump. Uh, Jessica Leeds' story is instructive here. This is a woman who claims uh, that in the middle of a crowded airliner in 1979, uh, President Trump assaulted her. Leeds has never been able to identify where this plane departed from, where it went to, uh, the date of the flight in question, uh, making our efforts to disprove her testimony uh, extremely difficult. Under the federal rules of evidence, uh, this story should have never been allowed to be presented uh, to the jury in this case. The same is true of Natasha Stoinoff's story. I mean, it's just, it's just mind-blowing. I mean, just think about that. There, there's there's no evidence it's just hey this person did i mean can you imagine you go and to accuse somebody you've got no evidence and you just go to court and say yeah this person did this to me so you have any evidence no i don't have any evidence at all i mean i'm just telling you that they did it so how can we prove that they did it i'm i'm because i'm telling you that they did it i mean that's essentially what's going on here and they have all these other women that are coming with their stories and they're trying to corroborate all those stories to make a, a legit claim against President Trump. Come on, guys. I mean, you know, put in the comment section, like, is this fair? Is this just, you know, is this is this a, a, a complete demonstration of legalizing our, our justice system, you know, because you have a, a political opponent? which again lacks any indicia of reliability, uh, any sort of credibility, any sort of uh, confirmatory uh, testimony from other witnesses uh, or any, anything else that would make you believe that this actually happened. So on the one hand, you have a judge who allowed in uh, this improper propensity evidence that should not have been allowed in. In our view, that polluted the jury's deliberations in this case, that presented a story to the jury uh, of a series of a pattern of conduct that the jury should, uh, should not have been considering. Uh, and we think that absent that propensity evidence, no fair jury could have reached the verdict that was reached in this case. And as a result, we believe uh, that this verdict needs to be overturned. But there's more than that. In addition to this improper propensity evidence, President Trump and his trial team were prevented from cross-examining E. Jean Carroll and other witnesses on crucial issues. Crucial. They were they were they were unable to cross-examine E. Jean Carroll at all. Like I mean, we're we're gonna hit play on this, but I have to stop because you know what reasons um, and talk about it for just a second. 
and we're going to get into it. So don't worry about that. But I mean, they were on, think about that. You, you, they couldn't cross exam. They couldn't question E. Jean Carroll while she was on the stand to, to, to ask questions to her about all these allegations. So she has a, he, she said, he said story, you know, she can't be challenged on the facts of this story in court. And so, I mean, what kind of justice system is this? Can you imagine if that was you? I mean, somebody said something that you did something to them and, and they're just going along with it because the, out of the, out of the um, mouth of one person, I mean, two or three witnesses is what the Bible says. If, if, something's, if something happened, you'd have two or three witnesses to verify what actually happened to make it a legit thing. Now, here in our justice system, we, we need to have evidence. You have to have proof. You have to have a due process to, to evaluate all the evidence and then present it to the jury to make sure that it's a viable thing, that it actually happened. But none of this stuff is happening right now. None. Crazy. Issues in particular relating uh, to political coordination and the political motivation behind this entire lawsuit. This is a lawsuit that was instigated in large part by George Conway, a longtime political foe and adversary of President Trump. This is a lawsuit that was funded by Reid Hoffman, a key political ally of the Biden-Harris administration and a major Democrat donor. We were limited in the evidence we were allowed to present at trial about these crucial facts. We were prevented from cross-examining E. Jean Carroll on aspects of that, that dynamic that underlies this entire lawsuit. And that, too, unfairly corrupted the jury's deliberations in this case and requires reversal of the jury verdict. I think. Let me just say this real quick, because uh, Trump, the, some of the things that, you know, the, his lawyers talk about right now that they weren't able to, to bring to court was the fact that E. Jean Carroll, uh, e. Jean Carroll was um, actually a, a fan of Law and Order. And like, there was an episode of Law and Order that really outlines exactly what her story was. That, that happened in, in this department store that, you know, she was in a department store, they were looking at lingerie and he made a root, he, he made a comment and they ended up in a changing room and nobody saw this, they might make it out and, and then all this other, then it, it just kind of escalated from there. And, and then, you know, he ended up, you know, raping her, you know, so that was a law and order story. I need to find that episode and see if there's any evidence to that, uh, any truth to that. But, um, but because she was a law and order fan, like that was, that was an exact, um, uh, depiction of of what this whole case was that she put against him in, in in this story so and but they weren't allowed to what he's saying is they weren't allowed to show the the parallels to her story to a parallel of, of this law and order episode and so very very interesting so i'm going to try to find that episode and maybe maybe if i can find it and maybe i can just do a little clip on that but anyway Let's, let's continue listening on to this. This political coordination point is particularly important, though. It's important to emphasize because what, what we have seen in the last few years is a weaponization by the Biden administration and by their political allies of our legal system and of our courts to unlawfully, unconstitutionally interfere with President Trump's core First Amendment right to run for president. That is a right guaranteed yep. to him by the Constitution. Yep. That is the it right is. that his political opponents are attempting to strip away from him. We have seen this in case after case after case where unfair political motives uh, have underlay what should be ser excuse me, serious legal proceedings. And I think when you look at this situation in TOTA, when you look at what the left, when you look at what the Biden-Harris administration is attempting to do to President <clears throat> Trump, this is insane. This is an absolute abuse of our legal system. It's an absolute abuse of the rule of law. It should be deeply offensive, not just to political supporters of President Trump, uh, but to each and every American. With yeah, and, and that's true. I mean, it should be. It should be very offensive, you know, because, you know, there's, you know, I was watching see, uh, another news outlet today that's very uh, Democratic heavy, you know. Uh, and so they were talking about the unemployment numbers, you know, so. I mean, it was it was it was crazy how all of a sudden now all the, the there's a low unemployment rate number right now. I think it was like at four percent that they were trying to you know propagate that that's what it was um, that that jobs are you know are are are, are up right now. And so it it was a, a a roundabout way of 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 you know promoting the Democratic Party and, and the Harris the Harris thing. And I think the acting job and labor person was on their sue something. And I'll, I'll talk about that later, but I mean, it's, it's, it's interesting to see the dynamics of what's actually happening, you know, and, it, and if you haven't caught on to this, you know, you, you've got different news medias that are, they're more democratic heavy. You have more news media outlets that are more 
Republican you know, heavy. And so it's, it's important to see that there is a difference between what's going on in the world. And we have to have a clear understanding of, of, of what's being attacked. And so right now we're going to continue to pray for pre- President Donald Trump, especially for his safety. You know, we, we know that we, they had an attempt on his life not, not too long ago and on his family. And they're constantly doing this because they're trying to keep him out of office. You know, or at least to have a fair campaign. I mean, if in, I mean, for whatever reason, you know, he just needs to have a fair campaign. And if you agree to that, put in a like, comments, comment below on that as well. Just have a fair campaign, whether you agree with the guy or not. Let's let's have a justice system that would allow us to have anybody who decides to run for office have a fair campaign and not have this this uh, attack or weaponizing of our judicial system to out another opponent. Anyways, I'm out for now. Leave a comment below. I'd love to hear what you guys think. I'll see you guys later. See you guys.